Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, please feel free to introduce yourself in the chat box as you join the room. I see we have some folks still coming in, so um, we'll give it a moment for that to slow down. And uh, Camille, maybe if you wanna give me a thumbs up when we're ready to go ahead. Okay. So as everyone is introducing themselves uh, in their chat box, it's great to see folks um, from so many different regions of the world. Um, I guess I should go ahead um, and introduce myself. Um, so my name is Megan Wacha. Uh, I use they, them pronouns, and I am a librarian at the City University of New York, um, here in New York City. Um, the president of Wikimedia New York City, and most importantly, um, a member of the IFLA Wikidata Working Group. Today, I have the great privilege of um, representing our collective work. Uh, this group of motivated professionals really aims to coordinate actions, events, and preparation of documents to leverage Wikidata and Wikibase in support of documenting collections um, and supporting uh, capacity in libraries to build out linked data, structured data, and cataloging work. And as a part of this work that we're doing together, um, we are inviting and supporting librarians and libraries, all of you, uh, to host a Wikidata event as a part of the global One Lib One Ref campaign. So I really want to thank all of my fellow working group members, um, and especially if, uh, uh, IFLA's Camille Francois uh, for uh, her expert facilitation and always keeping us on track. Before we get started, some housekeeping. This session is being recorded. If you are not comfortable appearing in the video, you may turn your camera off. And if you'd like, you may rename yourself as well. No matter how you choose to appear or not, uh, we do ask that you please stay muted when you are not speaking. We'll have plenty of time for questions and discussions at the end, but please feel free to ask questions in the chat box as they come up. And finally, I'm excited to see so many different country, countries and professional and wiki backgrounds in the room today. Um, English is my first language, um, and I sometimes speak too quickly when I'm nervous or when I get excited about a topic, and I get very excited about Wikidata. So please, please let me know if you need me to slow down or to clarify anything that I've said. Now, today's training was developed for library workers who already have some experience with Wikidata and are interested in organizing a local Wikidata event as a part of the One Lib One Ref campaign. So we will focus on the logistical aspects of organizing a Wikidata event as a part of this campaign. Um, but if you are new to Wikidata or not very confident in your Wikidata skills, don't worry. We will provide plenty of resources and support mechanisms to have all of your Wikidata questions answered. Um, everyone is welcome here. Now, a little bit of background. The One Lib, One Ref campaign, an abbreviation uh, for One Librarian, One Reference, uh, first launched in 2015-2016. The Wikipedia library, which had started as a grassroots initiative from an individual Wikipedia editor who wanted to provide fellow editors with access to subscription resources. Um, the Wikipedia library wanted to find ways to connect with librarians, not just with sources. So they spoke with some of the first Wikipedian librarians or Wikibrarians as uh, we like to call them and landed on a campaign in which information professionals would use a tool called Citation Hunt to identify a sentence on Wikipedia that needed a reliable source and then add a reference to it. Wikipedia was littered with, you know, statements that needed references. So, you know, I'm sure we've all seen that citation needed tag. On English Wikipedia alone, there were over 350,000 such statements when the campaign launched. And the campaign has since done an incredible job of addressing this issue. 
Just last year, one lib, one ref participants added over 18,000 citations across over 60 languages. So what does it mean, to, uh, or really what does it look like to move from adding references on Wikipedia to sources on Wikidata, right? What does the one lib, one ref campaign or Q2208061 as it's known on Wikidata look like when we move from adding those references to adding sources. It means that we will edit and create items for written works. Um, and I'm saying here written works, not books, um, because on Wikidata, books are treated according to the functional requirements for bibliographic records or Ferber model. Um, and this is a conceptual framework that distinguishes between the work and the specific iteration or edition of that work. We can add bibliographic information about a scholarly article or the journal that it appears in, or perhaps a local newspaper. All of these sources contribute to our information ecosystem, and all of them can be used as reliable, citable sources to verify information we find online. There is an entire community of Wikidatans committed to adding sources to Wikidata. Wikisite is an initiative to develop a database of open citations and linked bibliographic data to serve free knowledge. It's a conference, it's a wiki project, and at times there's actually been discussion about turning it into its own Wikimedia project, right? So we have Wikipedia, we have Wikidata, right? We would have Wikisite. Um, we would take Wikibase, the software underneath Wikidata, and create a second instance, which would only focus on bibliographic data. Right, that's, that's really exciting. Um, but most of all, Wikisite is a community of people like us focused on contributing source metadata to Wikidata. And they're doing incredible things. Um, in response to public health crises, for instance, um, a project was formed to add a corpus of research about Zika virus and to begin connecting the links of specific statements of knowledge to the source where the information exists, right? So Zika virus has natural reservoir, uh, host uh, specifies uh, for the pathogen in which it's uh, endemic. Um, you know, it is a type of mosquito. You know, who funded this research? Who published it? Um, really getting down to issues of provenance. Librarians Jerry O'Dell and fellow working group member Marilise Lemos Rojas uh, are using tools like Scalia to generate faculty profiles on a platform, a platform that is open source and community owned not something held by former legacy commercial publishers turned information analytics companies uh, that will sell the university's data back to the university. And by adding that information to Wikidata, it allows the university to then draw new connections between its authors and their collaborators. If you'd like to learn more about how libraries are using Wikidata and Wikibase, um, I would be remiss if I didn't point to a discussion series funded by Wikisite and led by this Wikidata working group. Um, it's a series of you know, six great videos and I really encourage everyone to watch them. Sources are at the center of the Wikiverse. They are core to Wikidata. At, um, as of March of this year, there are over 39 million publication items in Wikidata. That's 43% of all of Wikidata is citations. But there's still a lot of work to be done. So how can you get involved? Everyone can contribute as an editor. But as library professionals, we are uniquely qualified to facilitate the editing of others through organizing at a local level. And so that's what we're here to discuss. If you have never organized a Wikidata event before, don't worry, uh, you are fully capable of doing so and we are here to help. Um, so we're gonna go through uh, some, of, some of the key elements, goals and outcomes, the logistics of organizing an event, communicating out your event, providing that training, 
um, and supporting participants as they engage in making those first edits. Um, and finally, then how you communicate out the results of your work through metrics and reporting. Now, there are many different reasons a library might want to host an edit-a-thon um, or a wiki data-thon, whatever you want to call it. Um, from increasing their community's engagement with free knowledge to uh, making more visible a specific collection in its holdings. Edit-a-thons can also be a fun way to engage with difficult topics, like the continued marginalization of communities and the knowledge that they have to share. Um, no matter what your goal, there are two key questions to ask at the start of the process. First, who is your audience? You can certainly host a Wikidata event for students or the wider public. Um, one Lib, One Ref specifically aims to connect individual librarians and information professionals with Wikimedia projects. Uh, but will you primarily be working with public librarians or archivists or academic librarians? Uh, will you be working with librarians with a particular specialty, um, perhaps catalogers or scholarly communications professionals? And based on your anticipated audience, what theme or collection of publications will be, um, participants be interested in contributing to Wikidata? Um, you know, this is where I think it's key to point out that most people come to editing events because we want people to come to the event, right? And most people come to editing events because they are interested in the topic. Some people come because they are interested in the project like Wikipedia. Um, I've noticed that this is a little different with Wikidata. Uh, some librarians like myself get really excited about it and come regardless of the theme or the topic. Um, but it is helpful to have that theme or an initial collection of materials in mind that people can contribute. So this might, for instance, uh, focus on a particular subject area, um, COVID-19, uh, literature by LGBTQ authors. Uh, it could be a local publication uh, or by local authors. Uh, presentations from a recent conference you attended with your colleagues or perhaps historical publications that are a part of your library's collection, but don't have um, a large presence or visibility online. In terms of logistics, uh, this year's One Lib, One Rough campaign runs from May 15th to June 5th, and libraries are encouraged to host an event anytime during that three week period. If you want to host something outside of that period, that's of course fine to do. That is your choice. Um, but logistics also means making decisions about the location of the event, possibly ordering some refreshments for attendees as they edit. Uh, you know, in the before times here in New York, free culture uh, was really fueled by free pizza. Um, but the logistics for edit-a-thons have shifted a bit as we've moved from in-person events to remote ones um, over the course of the last year. Uh, we no longer need you know, to reserve a quiet room with tables, chairs, and a good internet connection uh, for the in-person event, but there are still some logistical decisions to make. Uh, the typical editing event uh, might take place, you know, in-person editing event might take place over the course of two to eight hours, but online events look quite different. Um, they might happen simultaneously in a two hours over Zoom or another web conferencing platform. They can also stretch out over the course of a week, kicking things off with a one hour training and then providing a chat platform such as Slack, Discord, Telegram, where participants can stay in touch and ask questions of the organizers, share what they're working on with each other and learn from each other. There is not one best approach to a virtual edit-a-thon. It really depends on your pedagogical goals and who is in the room, what's going to work best for their schedules and their learning styles. I find with Wikidata trainings that it can be especially helpful to record and share those recordings. Um, concepts will be new to participants and they may want to go back and listen again. Um, you will need at least 30 minutes for a basic Wikidata training, uh, but I find it's helpful to take 45 minutes or an hour for a more detailed introductory training. 
and then perhaps taking another hour for editing where people can ask questions. Anything beyond an hour and a half or two hours, um, people are going to start to experience fatigue, uh, Zoom fatigue, uh, and um, you know, so it's best to keep it limited time frame. If there's a budget, it can be nice to connect with attendees and promote participation by sending a small piece of swag, like a postcard or a sticker, if they are comfortable sharing their address with you. If there's not a budget, no worries. Uh, the most important thing is that participants learn something new and feel connected to the work at hand. Once the details of your event are set, it's time to let people know about it. Give your event a name and write up a description. Remember that there are lots of openly licensed images on Wikimedia Commons, like the ones I'm using here, that you can use too to illustrate a flyer. Make sure the announcement reaches your audience through established communication channels, whether that's a post on your website or through a listserv. The One Lib One Ref campaign already has some name recognition that it's built over the course of the last five or six years. Um, and this can really help generate interest by connecting it to um, that larger campaign. It's important to create a form for participants to register for the event. Uh, I always wanna know how many people are going to be in the room. Um, it changes how I approach the session, um, but it also lets me communicate with people before the training and follow up with them after it. Once you've communicated it out, uh, you can take the time to really focus on developing the training itself. The first step is to identify someone to offer that training. Um, this person should have the ability to talk in front of an audience. Uh, it can be especially helpful if they have teaching experience. They should have experience with and knowledge of Wikidata, including community practices and where to find help. But most of all, they should have a willingness to learn in real time and with others. Every time I lead a training, and I am not alone in this, a participant asks a question that I don't know the answer to. And that's great. It's fantastic. No person knows everything there is to know about Wikidata. And when collaboratively editing a project like this, we are also making a commitment to collaboratively ask questions and learn from each other. And so that's something that we can really, um, you know, model and demonstrate uh, through the training session. Um, and to that point, you know, you might, might find that one person doesn't have all of these skills. That's a great opportunity to find co-trainers with different complementary skills that can work together, that can work with you. So what should the training cover? Uh, when someone comes to a Wikipedia edit-a-thon, uh, they already have some relationship to Wikipedia, um, at least as a reader. But when someone comes to a Wikidata event, they likely don't know uh, that they're already using it in their daily lives. That when they ask a virtual assistant or their favorite you know, home surveillance device like Siri or Alexa a question, that oftentimes the answer is coming from Wikidata. So after explaining what Wikidata is, it can be helpful to briefly show some example projects that use Wikidata to get people excited about it at the beginning, before they even know how it works. We then move into the mechanics of editing Wikidata, um, showing and describing an item, explaining how items are connected or linked to each other. Um, and I can, uh, after I've gone through these slides, I'm happy to um, demonstrate some of this. Uh, you can then demonstrate this uh, by editing an existing item taking some time to focus on how to select properties to describe that item. If you're working with a specific type of item, like scholarly articles or um, you know, whatever it may be, uh, perhaps uh, materials from a specific collection, um, it can be really helpful to provide a list of suggested properties to your participants. Maybe even talk through some of them. So for instance, uh, you want to, might want to distinguish between the property for author, which will link to another item, you know, an item for an author on Wikidata, as opposed to the property for author name string, which stores the name, 
you know, as a string for an unspecified author for a publication. Uh, so as an example, um, you know, you could link to, if I was the author of a scholarly article, you could link to the item Megan Watcha to distinguish this Megan Watcha, or you could include the author name string Megan Watcha, but it wouldn't distinguish between this Megan Watcha versus that Megan Watcha. Okay. Um, if you have the time, you may also want to um, cover some basic errors that might come up, you know, some troubleshooting um, or tools uh, that show that things can be more automated or done in a batch process. Um, but for me um, and for the members of the Wikidata working group that sort of like developed uh, this core training, um, the most important thing is that people know the mechanics of Wikidata and know how to edit individual items by hand. And so that Wikidata working group um, has created a slide template and outline, um, which you can copy and adapt at the link on this slide. Um, and we are, of course, uh, you know, sharing these slides with everyone. Um, we really encourage you to make the training your own. Personalize it to the people you invite to your event and to your personal pedagogical style. Um, so at my Wikidata trainings, for instance, we spend a lot of time talking about the definition of Wikidata, right? Because, you know, too often, uh, you know, when I first started learning about Wikidata, you know, I'd, I'd see this single sentence and I'd be like, oh, okay, I think I understand that, right? But I found it really helpful to break it down into parts, right? Discussing what does it mean to be free and open? Yes, all content on Wikidata is available under Creative Commons Zero public domain dedication, um, and it's distributed on open source software. But what are the implications for the reuse of that content, for its provenance, for questions around verifiability and truth? The underlying data structure allows for language independence, meaning you can edit in any language on Wikidata. But there is a lot of translating and description that happens as a part of that process. What are the political implications of, of those translations? Um, what are the political implications of the fact that while you can edit Wikidata in any language, most of the conversations about Wikidata, so property proposals, questions, etc., cetera, um, are uh, dominantly in English. What does it mean to actually structure and link data? And how does that structure, as we input content into Wikidata, as we tell it things, how does that structure allow us to ask new questions and find new answers um, within this information ecosystem that we couldn't find with other traditional sources? And finally, what does it mean when you allow for human intervention on a project that is also edited by machines? In addition to these types of questions, uh, I also personalize my sessions by choosing examples that are relevant to what participants will themselves be editing. And I like to make a lot of bad jokes, keep things light and have fun. But no matter how much knowledge or humor the trainer brings, participants are likely to experience a barrier or moment of frustration. These are things, uh, there are things that we can do uh, to better support them, to kind of anticipate some of that. So an important resource for any edit-a-thon is to give people a starting point. It's really tough to know what needs to be added to Wikidata, what needs to be improved. And so you can support folks by providing a suggested list of items to create or edit. For a Wikidata event, um, it might not be, you know, an individual item, like please add this article. Um, it could be, um, but you might focus on a particular data source or collection. If you are a librarian at an academic university, um, perhaps your university puts out a journal and you could um, add those citations. If you are at a public library, perhaps um, local newspapers uh, don't appear uh, in Wikidata. And so you can add items for those newspapers. 
As a trainer, um, it can also be helpful to be in touch with other Wikidatans, other, other experts um, to help you answer tough questions. Uh, you can find Wikidatans uh, th perhaps through a local chapter or user group. So like Wikipedia, Wikimedia is an international um, project and there are uh, you know, over 40 different chapters. So you know, groups of communities of people um, in different geographic regions that edit together um, and advance this work together. Uh, this working group uh, will be holding a series of office hours over the course of the next week, um, weeks and then throughout the campaign. Um, but if you can't make the office hours or can't connect with someone through a local group, again, don't worry. Um, as I said earlier, no person knows all things. Um, and one of my favorite parts about an event is when I don't know the answer and myself and the participants can try to figure it out together. And there are resources on Wikidata about Wikidata, and you can find those through the community portal. Okay. Another thing that we can do, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to have a sip of water. Another thing that we can do to support participants is to track their edits using the dashboard. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about this in a moment. Um, identifying when someone needs help. Um, and because it's important to make sure that we're doing more good than harm on Wikidata, right? If someone's new, they make mistakes, that's fine, um, but we can clean them up a little bit. We don't want to leave a lot of edits that another Wikidata um, volunteer is going to have to clean up or that persist. Now, the dashboard tool is uh, also useful for communicating out the results of your event. And we recommend that every event organizer create a program on the dashboard to track the number of articles, or in this case, Wikidata items created or edited as a part of your local OneLib, OneRef project. This allows us to celebrate all of the incredible work done locally and globally as a part of this campaign. Small edits together yield a big impact. And this is one of the ways that we demonstrate it. Um, we've created directions for how to do this, um, which again, I've linked in the slides. Um, but recognizing that many of you are likely new to the dashboard itself, um, I want to take a moment to actually go through that process together now, and then you can refer to the slides um, as you do it on your own. Okay. So the Program and Events Dashboard is a multilingual tool to support the management of wiki programs and events. It includes tracking functions so organizers can support participants and measure and report the outcome of a program. Um, this is done um, through tracking functions, right? Um, and it's important to remember that every edit made to Wikipedia or to Wikidata is already public. This just collects the participants' edits together in one place, right? So we're not um, providing any additional level of tracking that isn't already available um, to the publicly, right? Um, and so we do this uh, through creating what the dashboard calls a program for a single event or across a campaign, uh, which, which essentially collects the metrics across multiple programs. The programming behind the dashboard is a little bit complicated, uh, but you can create a program for your event and connect it to the larger OneLib, OneRef campaign uh, in just two easy steps. Uh, the first step is to join the campaign. And again, uh, you know, so the first you click on the campaign link. And again, this is available in the slides. Um, and then you click on the login button using your Wikipedia account. It works, your, your Wikidata account, it works right on the dashboard and follow the pop-up wizard uh, to log in. If you want to use the dashboard in a different language, uh, you can select it from the drop-down menu, um, which is right here um, beside your username. After you've logged in, you want to click the create program button. On the next screen, you'll add the title of your event, the name of your um, library or institution. By default, the program will be set to track Wikipedia edits here. So 
because this is what it was originally developed for, was tracking Wikipedia edits. So you'll want to change the home wiki to Wikidata. So you can just start typing Wikidata and it will automatically appear. This will also automatically update the tracked wikis box below. You can add an additional description of your event if you'd like, maybe linking it out to your registration form. Uh, you can also edit these parts later um, after you've set up the program. Once I feel good about where things are, um, I click next once again. I then fill out the scheduled time and date for the program. If I'm offering a one hour training and then participants will edit on their own time, I might want to add uh, start and end times for activity tracking that are longer than the start and end times for the event itself, right? The event's an hour, but maybe we track editing over the course of a week. Um, I then select create my program. At this program moment, uh, bleh, excuse me, at this point, uh, your program is created and it's automatically added to the campaign. No additional steps. Uh, you can confirm that it's been added to the campaign by looking at the details of your program uh, where the campaign will be listed. And I've circled that here. And now that the program has been created, you can share the link with participants so that they can enroll in that program, right? That's how we add them in so that um, their edits can be tracked. Participants that already have a Wikipedia account can log in and join the program, uh, again, using that account. Participants without a Wikipedia account can create one by selecting sign up with Wikipedia. Regardless of whether they have a pre-existing count or are creating a new one, um, all participants should follow the pop-ups. It does require a few clicks um, to provide the appropriate authorization. And once they've joined the program, they will receive a welcome message at the top of the page and the program dashboard will collect their edits for the period that you've set. No additional steps are required. Um, now, sometimes it may be the case that someone you know, puts in an edit and they don't see it reflected on the dashboard right away or you don't see it on the dashboard, um, that's fine. The dashboard is still working. Um, it just uh, is working with so much data that it can sometimes take uh, a few hours to, to update um, with the most recent edits. You can also come to our office hours if you have trouble with um, some of these elements. <clears throat> so, this is the core of hosting a one lib, one, bleh, one lib, one ref event where participants add sources to Wikidata. Um, and as I said, throughout this training, um, there are resources available to support you in this process. And I've made sure that we have plenty of time for discussion and questions so that this is as useful as possible to you. Um, amongst our resources, uh, first and most importantly, I'm going to keep reminding everyone, um, are the office hours where you can have, indiv where you can have individual conversations uh, with various members of the Wikidata working group. You can ask questions about organizing your event, or if at your event a participant asks that tough question uh, that you're not sure how to answer, you can talk it through. Um, if you're new to Wikidata or would just like to refresh your Wikidata skills, um, there are a lot of great resources out there, right? So there are training modules from the Wiki Education Foundation. Uh, University of Edinburgh has also put out some incredible stuff. There are Wikimedian in residence there. Um, there are uh, multilingual resources through the Wikidata tours, uh, all of which I've linked to here. Start with templates, make things easier for yourself. Um, so we've created that slide template for your use, um, but there are a lot of other great resources available out there too. Um, sample slides, which you can find on Wikimedia Commons. Most of all, uh, we hope that you stay in touch. Uh, we will be updating the project page for this working group. Again, I've linked to it on this slide. Um, with all of the resources that we've discussed today and some other fun ones, including a zine about Wikidata um, that you can share with your participants and uh, get them excited and um, something physical and tangible. Um, so we very much hope that you will join us for the campaign uh, this May, and we really appreciate you um, joining us for the training today. And so with that, I am going to stop sharing my screen and we can open it up uh, for questions.
there was one question came up while you were talking Meg uh, thank you so much that was so inspiring and, and awesome and um, it was a question from Jay Shi. Um, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that um, Jay says in some spaces I've come across colleagues asking for best practices regarding what properties or constraints to add to a certain data type for example ethnic group sex or gender curious if the working group or other subgroups know that they're if there are some kind of best practices to implement for this, perhaps for this campaign. Wow, <laughs> this is this is an incredible question. Um, it's such a good one, and it's it's a question that doesn't have an answer. Um, so there are a lot of different perspectives. Um, on this question. Uh, I will take an example um, that I think is, is useful here, um, especially since I think we have some folks that are new to Wikidata um, in the room. So when you are um, adding a source to Wikidata um, as a part of this campaign, um, you might describe that source. One of the things you would describe um, is by adding the property for the author. Um, one of the things that's distinguished about these, about um, Wikidata, about RDF, the resource description framework, is that we're not just describing the work, we're describing the person that wrote the work, right? Which means that when we're describing an author, we might be asked to add things about their ethnicity, about their sex or gender. Um, on Wikidata, there is a property, sex or gender, P21, um, which uh, essentially asks that we assign that value to that person. But we don't necessarily have, well, one, sex and gender are two different things <laughs> and um, two ontologically separate concepts. And two, um, we don't usually have a citation to support what sex or gender that person has, right? So, um, uh, if someone were to add in my sex or gender, as they have, um, they might look at me or look at my name and add in one gender. Um, but I am trans non-binary. And, uh, and they don't know that. They don't have a citation for that. Or more importantly, I might not want that information to be public to Amazon and Google and you know, all of these different entities under a CC0 license. Um, so I think that these are important conversations to have in the room with the people that we're editing, right? Or with the people that we're editing with, with our participants. Um, there is not a con uh, clear yes or no, you should or should not add this, um, but Wikidata will suggest that you add these properties um, automatically once you've defined someone as human. Um, and so, uh, so this can be a topic of conversation around the ethics um, of the work that we do. Sometimes we can choose just not to add it if we are unsure. That tends to be my approach. Thanks, Meg. Um, Maria Rocio asks, um, for Galician language, I found that not all the dashboard interface is translated. Where can I solve this? Through Translate Wiki, maybe? Does anyone have any thoughts on that? Oh, that's a great question. And here's one of those wonderful moments where I am going to pull from the collective knowledge that we have in this room. <laughs> um, uh, do any members of the Wikidata working group or any other folks um, on this call um, have a thought about where we might um, address this issue? I, I, I always I, I always have to force myself to leave that that awkward silence for a moment. <laughs> um, okay, so this is a really important question, and sometimes you know the dashboard is a relatively new tool um, launched just in the last few years, and so not everything um, is necessarily going to be translated. Um, I think you know Translate Wiki perhaps. Um, one of the things you might do is to go to that language community. Um, 
if there is the equivalent of a community portal or a village pump and, <clears throat> and, and ask, say, I've noticed that this hasn't been translated. Um, has anyone, uh, you know, does anyone have ideas about where we can go about this? Um, there are also resource pages about the dashboard itself. There is a discussion page for the program and events dashboard. Um, I believe there are one, possibly two developers um, behind the project, um, but they're very committed to seeing it um, be as useful as possible to as many people as possible. Um, and so they certainly would take this on and I'll see if I can Thanks, Meg. Um, I think you're muted. Yes. No worries. Uh, Jay actually has their hand in the air, so I'm just going to ask to... So uh, this is Jackie oh, Shea from Smithsonian. Uh, Meg, I think we locally um, have a lot of discussion regarding the two properties that I just raised. Yeah. And so the question is, it may not be necessary to identify one versus the other. However, there seem to have some sort of um, property constraints being established all through various different data type. And I like to see if you have any strategies that you could share in a way is that how could we as a group to put in uh, some sort of weight into how the constraints gets established. For example, you know, um, you identify an entity as a human, and when you provide the surname, you must provide the given name. And so there is this, this constraints established with a certain type of properties that when one is present, the other must be present. And, and so in some way is that in this space of sex and gender is such a controversial environment. Is there a way for this community to present a voice in some way to prevent the property holder, or I don't know, how do you call them, that establish constraints to say when this data and data type is present, you must have this. Yeah, so um, so I'll give a response and then I see Stacy has raised her hand. So I don't know if she wants to respond to this as well or if she has a question, um, but uh, you know, I often say that like as Wikipedia is the encyclopedia anyone can edit, um, you know, it, it is also the community <laughs> that anyone can edit. Um, so, you know, as we as information professionals who think about ontologies, who think about the ethics behind ontologies, um, become increasingly involved in this work and involved in the community. Um, I think there are ways to really have these conversations. Um, uh, properties uh, the and the constraints around properties do change through discussion. Um, and with time. Um, and for P21 sex or gender, this is a conversation that comes up quite frequently. It's also one that came up when the property itself was established. Um, but they, um, you know, one of the things about being established is that, uh, you know, Wikidata launched in 2012, right when the Wikipedia community was getting a lot of bad press about the gender gap. So they were very focused on, we want to make sure that women are represented, right? <laughs> it's a very particular idea of gender. Um, and so they, they, were, they added it to every item, right? But they caused a lot of harm in that process. And they did recognize that sex or gender is different. They want, the community wanted to be trans inclusive. Um, it wanted to be inclusive of all genders and, and non-genders, but they struggled with the multilingual and um, aspect of, uh, of that property, right? Gender is conceived of many different ways across many different cultures and has had different you know, words to describe it over time. Um, and so they just kind of like condensed it all into this one thing and, um, 
and it's not necessarily the way that it needs to be moving forward. And so we can become a part of those discussions. Um, uh, I see that Stacy uh, has her hand raised and Diane has also put in a, um, a good comment on this topic as well. Yeah, thanks, Meg. And I, and I think so there's a few things I want to say in response to your um, question, Jackie. So one thing is that so we do have the IFLA larger Wikidata working group. If you would like to work on aspects of the project, like putting together a um, collective response to certain properties and property constraints, then join the group and then we would we can do that work separately from the campaign because I think we have to focus on the two separate things we have going on. We can't fix property constraints in the context of the one lib one ref campaign. However, on a practical level, when you run into these constraints, you can choose to ignore, this would be my practical advice, if a property states, oh, if you add, I don't know, citizenship, you need to add a bunch of other things, which you know, we, we can think as, as metadata people doesn't necessarily make sense. <laughs> so you can, you can choose to ignore those particular constraints. You're not, you're not harming the data, uh, I would say, from that perspective. Um, and I think the other thing that's really important to remember, if you're not familiar with the Wikidata projects, is there's no like, it's not like working with Library of Congress or uh, OCLC, there's no like body that is responsible for these. We are Wikidata, like we are the Wikidata project. Everyone who participates is part of that project. There's no like headquarters of people making decisions about properties. So when you run into problems, well, I wanna add, um, you know, a certain kind of, uh, you know, I, I, I work a lot in sort of indigenous context and people will say, I wanna add Turtle Island as someone's identification for um, where they're from. We can't do that because it's a data issue. That's not Wikidata as an organization is preventing you from adding it. That's, that is that that area isn't, isn't worked out. It's not been established. And so if we want to work in some of these areas, which I think are well recognized, it's not just a Wikidata problem that we have with gender and ethnicity and language. This is like a knowledge organization issue across so many sectors. And we can turn to some of these areas where we have um, you know, ethics developing that we're aware of, where we can help also help us guide that work. So it might be also the community of you know, professional library workers and all of that work on ethics connecting also with the Wikidata community. So I would say that is a huge, that's an important and problematic you know, area to put it lightly. There is already lots of conversation that has happened in various communities. If this is something you want to work on, then I would say let's bring that to the larger Wikidata working group as a possibility. For the context of the one lib one ref campaign, you can ignore those kinds of constraints on a practical level. You can also make sure that when you are, are um, doing any events or you're training people, you're talking to people that really make sure that people are aware that there's not, that we're, we are a community of, uh, you know, all of these things are developed in conversation. It's an international multilingual community, which multilingual uh, data is particularly challenging. We know that language also isn't one to one to one to one, right? We don't have easel, easel like translations across concepts are, are hard. There's not someone sitting in charge of all of this. So that's, I find when I'm teaching about Wikidata, that's something, especially for people who are used to being in an environment where there are lots of constraints that come from, you know, so-and-so is in charge of this vocabulary we don't have that context here. And that's really important to communicate as well. That's all. There was a question in the chat from Imelda um, Brazil, but I think this has been answered by our lovely community, uh, just generally about um, Limitations on information included in Wikidata, for example, journals published in the Philippines are not yet included. How old does the information need to be to be included in Wikidata? Um, Diane 
I'm um, Lace, um have answered this quite well, I think. Um, I don't know if anyone has anything else to add, but the, the general message is bibliographic data is always welcome. Um, yes. Wikidata. I will plus one that as well. Um, and the only other thing that I'll add is that, um, you know, the large commercial publishers uh, and um, and some of the discovery layers that we use on top of them, um, including Google Scholar, um, really privilege uh, information sources um, from North America and Europe. Um, this is a huge problem. It's a huge problem. And so I would say local publications, especially local journals, local newspapers are, are for me, the best content that some folks can bring in, right? <clears throat> to make it more visible um, to other researchers, bring new eyes um, to it as Wikidata um, content starts to feed into other um, elements. I'm not seeing any other hands or, or questions at the moment. Great, I mean, so I think, um, you know, the only other thing I would say is like, in addition to questions, I'd also love to know if um, folks on this call have any tips for a successful workshop that they would like to share with the group. Um, if they have any experiences offering a workshop or any concerns they have about offering a workshop that they want to share. And I think Stacy, your hand is raised. Yeah, I did raise my hand. <laughs> I was just gonna share that, you know, I think when it comes to, if you're working within a library, um, especially if you're in like a metadata area or, or digital collections or initiatives area, you can often combine this work with, with, as Meg mentioned at the beginning, with things that you might already have on the go. So there's lots of ways also that we, that you might wish to explore if you're not familiar with looking at tools like OpenRefine. So OpenRefine has a, an easy way to move um, data from OpenRefine to Wikidata. So you could think about in the context of campaign, um, if you have researchers for your example at your institution and you want to add their publications to Wikidata, going from a spreadsheet to open refine to Wikidata is, is um, I wanna say fairly straightforward, but you I mean you can use the campaign as a way to, to do some of that work or you want to highlight uh, research in a particular area. And this also helps your staff if you're working um, at a library or other kind of GLAM institution, it helps your staff build their skills out as well. So you have that ability not only to be adding content, but you're doing it in a way that is um, sometimes these events are called, I think there's like a micro, micro contributions. Is that right? I want to say that. Okay, good. So they're small. They're not, you can, you can, but there's a nice boundary to this work and you can make it quite small, which helps people also be able to feel like it's something that you can do without a lot of um, sort of weeks and weeks and weeks of training and planning and, and all of those kinds of things that so you can make it quite small and have it be not, I want to say not serious, but that's not maybe a good way to say it. But it can be fun and it can be alert, you know, if you take it as a learning event, it can actually be uh, fun and like you feel like you're doing something without, uh, with a lot of impact, without needing to navigate a lot of different things that we might normally have to. There are two questions in the chat. Um, Paula Mahadi asked um, if we could give an idea about what kind of experience is expected from organizers in one lib one ref. So what level of experience are organizers expected to have? And Lynn Kleinveld also asks if a live demo is possible. So those are the two questions there at the moment. 
These are two great questions and I'll, I'll be mindful of the five minutes we have available. I wanna respect everyone's time. Um, so uh, in terms of experience, uh, what I will say is that myself and many other uh, folks on this call, um, I'm sure like organized their first Wikipedia edit-a-thon before they were editors themselves, right? Like I ordered all the snacks, sent out the invitations and only then did I teach myself to edit so I can teach others to do the same. On Wikidata, um, it is a little bit different. So it helps to have a little bit more um, grounding. Um, but this is where I would say, um, you know, knowledge of how to create an item and edit an existing item is central. Um, but uh, there are a lot of, if you haven't edit Wikidata before, there are a lot of resources out there where you can learn and start practicing now, right? Hand edit some, some items, come to the office hours and maybe have someone look at it. Um, and, uh, and then you can, you know, just start working with colleagues, right? Um, uh, and create a, a, a welcoming space to all learn this, this work together, right? So, so I would say there, there is no, no bar like threshold on this. Um, in terms of a live demo, I'm, I'm, I'd be happy to do something really, really brief. Um, and I apologize if I miss any elements um, or if there's anyone else on this call who would like to do a live demo. They're welcome to take that on as well. No, no. Okay. Um, I don't see any hands raising. Um, so I am going to go ahead and share my screen again. Um, okay. 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 So can you see a screen? Can I get a thumbs up? Great. Okay. So this is a sample item. This is the, um, this is a Wikidata item for uh, the article published by Marilise Lemos Rojas, Jerry O'Dell and others um, that I pointed to earlier. At the top, we have the item label, which is human readable. Um, we then have the QID, the item ID, um, which is machine readable, right? Um, and, uh, and then once we have created, you know, we have that existing item, we can look at the statement groups, right? So Wikidata operates on item property value. You may be familiar with subject predicate object from RDF. Um, so you start to layer statements. This is an instance of a scholarly article. And this then points to the item of four scholarly articles. It has this title, these main subjects. And in this case, a main subject is Wikidata. Um, I could go through and perhaps add additional information to this record. Um, if I wanted to add a statement, I would simply scroll to where I can add statement. And it makes some suggestion, for instance, how many pages is this article? Um, I may also want to create a new item. So I'm going to do this super, super quick. Um, the Journal of Librarianship and Scholarly Communication. I'm going to put these side. Can folks see them side by side with each other? Okay. Um, the Journal of Librarianship and Scholarly Communication published this issue. Um, this is the same journal that that original article was in. Um, and so I might want to create an item for this article, this scholarly article. The first thing I'm going to do is make sure, well, is log in. Apparently I haven't done that. If I do not log in, uh, it will capture my IP address. I'll want to make sure that the item does not exist first and it doesn't. So then I'm going to create a new item adding that human read readable label, maybe a little description. And then 
I can begin to start layering statements. The first one, of course, being instance of. And as I just begin typing, I can see it's a scholarly article. Just like editing Wikipedia, one of the things that can be really helpful in terms of identifying properties and statements that you want to add to an item is to look at examples um, of similar items. So I can look at the example item that I first showed to see what types of properties I want to add. And Wikidata, now that I've defined it as an instance of a scholarly article, will begin to suggest properties that I want to add as well. Okay. And with that, I believe we are one minute past the hour. Um, I really want to thank everyone um, for joining the conversation today. Um, and I, I hope that you will join us for the office hours. Um, and I look forward to seeing all of the results of um, your local uh, events as a part of this One Lib, One Ref campaign using Wikidata. <laughs>